Hey YouTube, this is Praxis Prepper. One of the great things about... Oh, okay, let's try that one again. One of the great things about having a wood stove to heat your house is that you get a free source of cooking all throughout the winter. Um, whenever I have my fire going and I'm not cooking on it, I kind of feel like I'm wasting something. Opportunity lost, you know, whatever. Um, and one of the great things to cook on there is beans. It's such a long time to cook uh, to get them nice and soft. Um, they're a great sort of uh, post-SHTF survival food because beans, is you know, you know, they store. In fact, they're kind of like the mantra, like beans, bullets, band-aids, they're right in there. So um, they're a really important uh, food for post-collapse or even now. I'm um, pretty much all vegetarian, so beans are something that should be in my diet and uh, I try to keep in there as much as I can. Um, so I want to talk a little bit about today about just how to cook beans because they're really pretty simple and it's possible to cook them really badly and have them just taste like, like shite. So uh, I want to talk about what I do to make my beans and I think they're pretty tasty. I do it from all uh, raw ingredients and a lot of the stuff you can grow right in your own garden and it, you don't have to do exactly this um, but this is what I do and you can deviate from it a, a lot. I usually put in some olive oil, uh, maybe a couple tablespoons of olive, olive oil for you know, a pot of beans about that big. When I pour beans in I will usually um, maybe uh, pour in maybe about three quarters of a cup, maybe a cup worth of dry beans, uh, and that'll serve a couple of people for you know, a few days with leftovers and things like that. Uh, a lot of people talk about soaking your beans overnight first. I've done that. Uh, it's supposed to remove the oligosaccharides or whatever, like sugars that you can't um, uh, digest that you know, create gases in your intestines and all that. I don't really find the difference one way or the other. Right? So now I don't really ever soak my beans ahead of time. I just put them right in the water, start them cooking right away. Um, I'll put in some olive oil with those. Um, I'll usually put in some cabbage. Uh, oftentimes people will uh, make beans with um, you know, broth. They'll, take, they'll start with like a you know, vegetable broth or a chicken broth or something like that. Um, I like to make my own broth as best I can. Cabbage is something that you can easily grow in your garden. So cabbage usually goes in to make a good broth. You know, cut up into the smallest pieces that are sort of convenient. Throw it in a pot. Maybe for, like I said, uh, you know, half, uh, three quarters of a cup of beans, you might want to have maybe almost as much cabbage, about the same amount. Uh, carrot usually will go in. I'll pop the end off the carrot. Um, and you could shred that up into... Uh, what you doing? Making beans. Uh, you could chop it up into really small pieces. Uh, I usually just kind of do this because it's easier and faster, um, and it works fine. They're going to turn up. In, they're going to turn into mush while they, you know, sit there on the stove anyway. So I'll do that. And again, carrot is something you can easily grow in your garden. This is going to add a little bit of sweetness to it. As for what the cabbage adds, I don't know. Quality. I, I'm not sure exactly what the flavor matrix the cabbage adds, but it. It, it's, it's a very important ingredient, I find, to have that broth kind of kind of taste to it. Super important, onions. This is, again, something you can grow in your garden. It doesn't have to be an onion, though. It could be a, a chive or a leek or, you know, garlic. Any of those kind of allium things are good. If you're into wild edibles, you've got to be a little careful um, when you're looking for onions because there are some plants that look very much like onions um, called camas. And they are not really a safe thing to eat. In fact, I almost thought that I had poisoned myself to death once. I was working in New, New Jersey, and uh, I went wild edible grazing while I was doing a job down there. Uh, and I made it myself a salad and collected some wild onions, what I thought were wild onions. Uh, and then while I was eating the salad, um, I had a flashback to my you know, wild edible book, and I remembered, oh wait, there's something that looks like onions that could be poisonous. I looked it up and it's called death camas. Uh, so, you know, you got to take that seriously. As it turned out, I was, I, I was alright. I guess as long as it has an onion smell, uh, it's not death camas. Um, but that gave me a little bit of a scare. So, anyway, onions are super important if you're making kind of a broth that you're going to put your beans in. So, definitely get, get yourself some onions or leeks or something in the allium family. Here's a clove of garlic. In case you didn't know what a clove of garlic looked like. That's it. Salt, pretty important. I'm not going to tell you how much to put in. You know, maybe you got salt, high pressure, 
blood pressure issues or whatever, you know, whatever you would do for salt um, in there. I'll often just put a little bit of cayenne or just some hot pepper. This is cayenne powder I have here. What I'm usually using nowadays is I raided a dumpster a bit ago and I found some old thrown out habaneros and I chopped them up, froze them, and now they're sitting in the freezer. And for a pot, like about that big of beans, like I said, about three quarters of a cup of beans, I'll usually use a pile of habaneros, like just about the size of my, my fingernail there. Not very many, a little bit goes a long way. You'd use a little bit more cayenne, although this is dry, so you wouldn't, you know, do that, you know, just try it out. Give it a taste. Uh, cumin is a good thing to put in there. Now, uh, cumin, cayenne is something you can grow in gardens, you know, in the northeast where I live. Cumin, I don't know, don't you have to, like, be a spice trader and go to, like, the West Indies to get cumin? I don't know exactly what cumin is. Um, but it, that makes a nice addition. Not necessary, though. Uh, another thing that's important, and I don't have any with me right now, so I'm using this dried version, celery seeds. Celery is really great when you're making a, a, a broth for yourself. Uh, and celery is an easy thing to grow. Uh, I just don't happen to have any right now. And, you know, dried up celery seeds work just as well. These are the kind of beans that I use. It's kind of a mix of different beans. Uh, there's some black turtle beans, some navy beans, some pinto beans in there, kidney beans. They're all mixed up together. It doesn't matter. Just put them all in there together and we'll all give you their complex matrix of nutrients in there. And the last thing I'll oftentimes throw in is I use beans as a garbage disposal for everything else. There's some crumbs of some rice crackers and there's some nori in there. And that's just going to go right in there too. It'll just kind of dissolve out into it. You can put corn chips, like the crumbs at the bottom of corn chips, and all that stuff also oftentimes has a lot of salt in there, so you may not have to add your own, your own salt to the mix. So, like I was saying, olive oil, cabbage, onion, carrot, uh, celery, those are kind of the important things. You kind of go without the olive oil, I suppose, but the onion's important, the, uh, the carrot's important, the cabbage is important, and the celery is important. The other things you just kind of do with the taste, and then just let it sit on your wood stove for a while. It's very easy to make. It's not that big of a deal. Very healthy food, a lot of nutrients in the beans. Um, is, there, is there energy in the beans? Maybe. I didn't get too much into the specifics. The fact that I'm not dead means to me that it's working. So, you know, that's kind of the way I, I roll. Try it out. Beans on your wood stove if you can, uh, or in a solar oven, either during the summer or winter, whenever you think that solar ovens can work for you. I haven't really myself experimented that much with solar ovens during the winter, mostly just because it's uncomfortable to go outside and I don't want to. And I've got a fire going downstairs. Cook safe. Enjoy your wood stove. Thanks for watching.